Hello, friends. Welcome to This Day in Jack Benny. I'm John Henderson. This episode is from May 6th, 1945. On the big screen at the time, you could see the six foot three Gary Cooper, also Ronald Coleman, Spencer Tracy, Clark Gable, Van Johnson, and Edward G. Robinson. I was warned against the siren call of adventure. At my age, I should never have stopped to talk with you. Never? That was from the movie Woman in the Window. In music, you could hear Bing Crosby. I love you. And Frank Sinatra. Come out, come out, wherever you are. In this episode, they mentioned the author Mark Twain. Some things man doesn't like to tell about himself unless he gets beyond the grave, as they say. You see, truth is a very valuable thing. I believe we should be a little economical with it. The ventriloquist Edgar Bergen had his own radio show with his dummy Charlie McCarthy. But we have had a lot of fun together. Yes, yes. Do you remember how you used to come to me and beg me to tell you a story? Yeah. <laughs> I like the simple joys of life, such as skipping school and getting into trouble. Yeah. Almost every show on the radio had an announcer slash commercial reader. There was Harry Von Zell. And oh, so easy to prepare. Bill Goodwin. The voice of information and education. Jimmy Wallington. Famous for quality the world over. And of course, Don Wilson. It's smoother, it's creamier, it's more chocolatey. Don Wilson had been Jack Benny's announcer since 1934, two years before Phil Harris joined the cast in reality. But in this season, they're presenting fictionalized origin stories of the cast. Oh, oh, it's you, Mr. Kern. <laughs> You know, those first two articles were very successful. Oh, you mean how I found Mary Livingston? Mm-hmm, and how you found Rochester. And now my editor is interested in knowing how you found Phil Harris. Mr. Kearns was played by Joseph Kearns, who would go on to play Mr. Wilson on the black-and-white Dennis the Menace. He's one of a number of character actors you might recognize from this episode. There was Frank Nelson, best known for The Jack Benny Show, and his catchphrase, Yes? There was B. Benaderet, who would go on to play a number of cartoon voices, like Betty Rubble on the Flintstones. Please take good care of Bam Bam. Bam Bam. <laughs> Mel Blanc not only played Barney Rubble on the Flintstones, but was already the voice of a number of Looney Tunes. The only voice you might not recognize would be the red-haired Larry Stevens, who filled in for Dennis Day for a brief time. If you'd like to contact me, you can email jackbennypodcast at gmail.com or on Twitter, it's at thisdaybenny. And enjoy the show. The Jack Benny Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Let's go out to Jack Benny's house where we find Jack and Rochester cleaning out the swimming pool. Well, all the water's out of the pool now, boss. Yeah, guess this pool sure can get dirty in a few months. Maybe it would keep cleaner if it had a little, if it had a tile bottom. Well, I... Or even a cement bottom. Well, I... In fact, any kind of bottom would be better than this Mississippi mud. <laughs> Well, I would cement it, but I'm growing rice in the shallow end. <laughs> now, come on, let's start cleaning the pool. We'll begin down at the deep end. Okay. Watch your step going down the sloping part. But it's still wet and slippery. <laughs> Ooh. Congratulations, boss. 18 inches further than last year. <laughs> Rochester, help me up. Okay. Now, Rochester, pick up that stick and clean out the drain. What stick? That one up there on the edge of the pool. Boss, put on your glasses. That's the diving board. <laughs> oh. Oh. Anyway, let's get on with the scrubbing. Okay. I'll go to the house and get a bucket full of water. You don't have to go to the house for water. Just turn that handle up there. But, boss, that's the one that fills the pool. Don't worry. You turn the handle, and I'll hold this bucket under the pipe. But, boss, that'll be... Tut, tut, tut. Now go ahead and turn the handle. <laughs> I've got the bucket. Okay. Ready? Yes. Turn it off. Turn it off! Turn it off! <coughs> Rochester! Rochester, I'm drowning! Everything's gone black! You ain't drowning, boss! You got the bucket over your head! Don't stand there saluting me. Take that bucket off my head. Okay. 
Come on now, let's try to get... Now look at that frog over there in the corner of the pool. Isn't he cute? Yeah, he's sure big, too. Hey, Rochester, help me catch him. He'd make a nice pet. I'd like to keep him. <laughs> Doggone anything that's green you like to see. <laughs> Hurry, he's hopping away. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now I've got him cornered. All right, all right, all right. Rochester, where did he go? Where is he? Put the bucket on your head. You got him trapped. <laughs> on my head. Get him off. Get him off, quick. Oh, still, I'll get him. Rochester, put down that broom. For heaven's sake, you could hurt me with that. Hello, Jack. What's all the excitement? Rochester, the next time you... Boss, boss, Miss Lennison's here. Tip your frog. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mary. Right, 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 right. Oh, darn it, he got away. And I wanted to keep him. Oh, Jack, you've already got a turtle, a lizard, a garter snake, two crickets, and a caterpillar. What do you want all those things for? Well, Mary, it's no fun coming home at night to an empty house. <laughs> you know. That reminds me of the first time we met. Huh? When you leaned over and whispered in my ear, come up to my apartment, babe, and I'll show you my insects. <laughs> Yeah. I was a sly one, wasn't I? Eh? Some sly one, the way you chased me around the room with a butterfly net. Oh, that was years ago. I've got a lasso now. <laughs> Say, Mary, how do you like the way I'm fixing up my backyard? Oh, it's swell, Jack. And you know, Mary, as soon as the pool is filled, I want you to come over and swim every day. Oh, I'd like to, Jack, but I'm putting all my money into war bonds. All right, all right, but I don't charge anything for the shower. No, but the price of towels is outrageous. <laughs> Rochester. Rochester's right. You charge for everything. Five cents for a sun chair, seven cents for a beach umbrella, ten cents for water wings. Mary. You've even got a meter on the diving board. Now, Mary. Why, last year you ma made more money out of your swimming pool than you did in radio. Well, it was a very hot summer. <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You've got the only swimming pool that's listed on the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> Stocking thing, stocking thing. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Miss Livington. Oh, hello, Larry. Hiya, kid. Say, Larry, I've got good news for you. I'm fixing up my pool, and anytime you feel like swimming, come on over here. Gee, thanks, Mr. Benny, but I can't swim. Well, you can go waiting. Sure, and up to your neck, it's only 15 cents. <laughs> yeah, I lose money on Gary Cooper. You know? <laughs> Say, Larry, I thought you'd be down to the studio rehearsing your song for the program. Oh, I did that this morning. Would you like to hear it, Mr. Benny? Sure, sure. Go ahead, kid. I wonder how tall he is, anyway. <laughs> Now, if you want to stick around, you can help me fix it. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Livy. Hello, Phil. Hiya, Phil. Hello, Mr. Harris. Hiya, kid. How's the red-headed Sinatra today? 
Well, cleaning out the old pool, getting ready for business again, huh, Jackson? Yep. Say, Phil, would you like your job back again this summer as lifeguard? No, not after what happened last year. What happened, Phil? Every time somebody yelled for help before I could save them, I had to buy a ticket to get in the pool. <laughs> I'm sorry, Phil, but I can't afford to pay you a lifeguard salary and let you swim for nothing. And anyway... Rochester, what are you doing? I'm testing the dining board. <laughs> good, good. Now, will you go in the house and call a printer? Tell him we want the tickets for Wednesday. Yes, sir. Shall I tell him that this year we're going to pay him, or is he going to have to swim it out again? <laughs> Leave it up to him. Yes, sir. By the way, Phil, uh, what did you come over here for? Well, Jackson, I dropped by to ask you to do me a big favor. A favor? Yeah, you know the nightclub I'm running. Oh, yes, yes, yes. How's it going? Fine, and Jackson, tonight is celebrity night. Oh, celebrity night, eh? Yeah, and, uh, well, I don't want to impose on you, but if you aren't doing anything, I thought that, well, I thought that maybe you could come over certainly, and... Certainly, Phil, certainly. I'll be glad to. What shall I wear? An apron. We're sure to help. <laughs> Look, Phil, if you think hey, that Phil, I... Phil, who are the celebrities Jack's going to wait on? Hmm. Well, I'm not sure who's going to show up, but this afternoon I got on the phone, I called up Ronald Coleman, Spencer Tracy, Clark Gable, Van Johnson, Mark Twain, Bing Crosby, and... Wait a minute, Phil. What, you called Mark Twain? Yeah. Phil, Mark Twain's been dead over 30 years. Well, how do you like that? I must have had an old phone book. <laughs> Look, Phil, how long have you been having these celebrity nights? Oh, I started last week, Jackson. I had a swell turnout, too. Charlie McCarthy was there. You mean Charlie and Edgar Bergen? No, no, Edgar was out of town, so Charlie came alone. What? And you want to know something, Jackson? He ain't so much. He sat there all evening and never opened his mouth. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake, Charlie McCarthy is a dummy. Look, Jackson, as long as they pay their check, I don't pry into their private affairs. <laughs> well, thanks, Bill, but I don't think I want to come over to your club tonight. Oh, well, of course! What is it, Rochester? There's a gentleman here to see you, a Mr. Kearns. Oh, Mr. Kearns, the newspaper man. I'll be right in. Mr. Benny, and I want to tell you that my editor was very pleased with that last story you gave me. Oh, you mean the one about how I found Phil Harris? Mm Mm-hmm. It was as interesting as the stories on how you found Mary Livingston and your butler, Rochester. Oh, I found Mr. Harris in Vermont. (laughs) Oh! (laughs) And now I uh, I want to do an article about... Right between Vermouth and Vermont, you know, (laughs) there. I said, I want to... (laughs) Pardon me, what did you say? I said, I want to do an article about Don Wilson. Uh, tell me, uh, how did you come to select Don as your announcer? Don Wilson? Well, I'll tell you. The very first time I heard Don speak, 
I was impressed with his voice and delivery. Oh, I see. And you thought he'd be good doing commercials, huh? Anyway, I knew from the start that Don had a very good voice for radio. And you've been proven right, Mr. Benny. You know, I've heard lots of people comment about his voice, his pronunciation, and his pear-shaped tones. Yes, Don is the only announcer in radio with pear-shaped tones and a body to match. <laughs> It works out swell. Well, tell me, Mr. Benny, uh, how did you discover Don Wilson? Well, I found Don shortly after I started in radio. In fact, I was on for my second sponsor, the International Corset Company. Did you hear my program then? No, but my mother told me about them. Oh. <laughs> well, the way it happened was this. Uh, one day I got a call from my sponsor asking me to come down to his office. Uh -huh. He said he wanted to talk to me. So I got into a taxi, picked up Mary and Phil. You see, they were with me at the time. And the three of us drove over to my sponsor's office. Say, Jack, your sponsor really has a nice building here And he certainly believes in advertising Yeah, look at that big neon sign The International Corset Company We cover the globe <laughs> Well, there's no use standing out here Let's, uh... <laughs> Phil, get away from those windows <laughs> Come on. There it is. Uh, I beg your pardon, miss. Uh, would you tell Mr. Willoughby that Jack Benny is here to see him? Well, Mr. Willoughby's expecting you, Mr. Benny. Go right through that door. Thank you. Just follow me, kid. Yes? Uh, uh, Mr. Willoughby, please. Oh, you're Mr. Benny. Mr. Willoughby's expecting you. Go right through that door. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, kid. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I'm here to see Mr. Willoughby. Oh, you're Jack Benny. Yes. Mr. Willoughby's expecting you to go right through that door. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, kid. Yes. Miss, I'm Jack Benny. Mr. Willoughby's expecting me. Who's Mr. Willoughby? <laughs> Look, miss, isn't this the International Corset Company? Yes. Well, Mr. Willoughby is the president. Oh, you mean Snoogie. <laughs> Snoogie? Yes. Go right through that door. Oh, for, well, all right. Come on, kid. Mr. Willoughby? Yes. Surprise? <laughs> Mr. Willoughby, I'm Jack Benny. Oh, yes, yes. Come right in. I've got Mary and Phil with me. Oh, splendid, splendid. Hello, Mr. Willoughby. Hiya, bub. What do you hear from the hips? <laughs> Phil. Now, Mr. Willoughby, what is it you wanted to see me about? Well, frankly, Jack, since you've been broadcasting for us, our company is losing money. Losing money? But last week you said you had more orders than you can fill. I said we had more corsets than we can fill. <laughs> oh, We've been selling corsets for 15 years, and this is the first time the company is feeling the pinch. Oh. oh, well, Mr. Willoughby, if people don't buy your product, what has my radio program got to do with it? Oh, look, Jack, we're paying you enough money. Why don't you stop reading the commercials and hire a good announcer? Well, Mr. Willoughby, if you don't like the way I read the commercials, Phil Harris can do them. Now, wait a minute, Jackson. Here, Phil, read this commercial I dreamed up last night. Now, get this, Mr. Willoughby. The show opens with a big fanfare. Then we go into our theme song, dedicated to the modern miss who wears an international corset. Then as the music of the theme song fades down, Phil steps up to the microphone and says, This program is sponsored by the International Corset Company. We don't guarantee to take it off you, but uh, we can pack it in so nobody will know. And uh, you'll just love the new slogan, Gather unto you what is yours. <laughs> and then we also... Wait a minute, Jack. Wait a minute. Th 
Those are the commercials I'm talking about. Now, look, Mr. Willoughby, you can't blame my program if you're losing money. There must be something wrong with the product. Something wrong with the international corset? Are you crazy? Mr. Willoughby, I own I know what you said. But look... Have you ever heard of the woman in the window? Yes. Well, before using our product, she couldn't even get in the house. (laughs) Hey, Mr. Willoughby, you asked for it. I received hundreds of complaints about your corset. Complaints? Yes. The steel you use in the stays is defective. When someone wearing your corset bends over, the stays have a tendency to snap loose with a ping. <laughs> with a ping? Yes. I can't believe it. It's, it's incredible. Why, it's... Wait a minute. My secretary wears an international corset. I'll buzz for her. When she comes in, I'll ask her to bend down. And if the international corset is what you say... What is it, Snoochie? Hmm. <laughs> Ethel, uh, would you mind picking up that pin on the rug? What? Ethel, would you mind bending over as though you're picking something up? There. Did you hear that, Mr. Willoughby? Ping! No. No, it can't be. I I don't believe it. Uh, Would you mind bending over again, Ethel? Certainly. Uh... There. That's the first time I ever heard Ethel ping. All right, you win, Jack. You win. But I'll give you a proposition. I'll put better steel in my corsets if you'll get a good announcer to do the commercial. Okay, Mr. Willoughby, it's a deal. Come on, Mary. Come on, Phil. Let's go. What are you going to do, Jack? Yeah, where are you going to find an announcer? I don't know where I'm going to find one, but I know what I want. I want someone with a voice that's different, a voice that has dignity, charm. And I won't stop looking until I find one. I'll find an announcer if it takes me ten years. And uh, that's how you found Don Wilson? It wasn't that easy, Mr. Kearns. I tried voices, voices, deep ones, high ones, soft ones, long ones. All right, you're next. Read this. The International Corset Company presents Jack Benny. Now the show opens, and you say... The International Corset Company presents Jack the Bee, the Bee, Jack the Bee. Never mind, never mind. All right, bud, you try it. The show opens, and you say... The International Court Company presents Jack Benny. Now cut that out, and you won't do it. All right, fella, you're next. Read this. The show opens, and you say... The internet... The internet... The international course... Of, course... Of, presents Jack... 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 Jack, you've auditioned over 500 people. Yeah, where are you taking us now? I said I was going to find an announcer, and I will. We're going right in here. Hey, Libby, look what it says on the door. The Acme Elocution School. Oh, yeah. We can train your vocal so you won't sound like a yokel. Come on, let's go in. A with a U is... A-U-A-U. D with a U is... D-U-D-U. U-D-U-D-U-A-U-A. G with a U is... G-U-D-U. E with a U is... A-U-D-U. A-U-E-U-D-U-D-U. Good. Hey. Hey, Mary. Mary, what do you think? P with a U is P U P U. Why? Please, please, what's all this disturbance over here? Oh, I'm sorry if we're intruding, but I'm Jack Benny. I'm looking for a radio announcer. Well, you've come to the right place. Now, let's see. In this class, I have little Harry Von Zell, Billy Goodwin, Jimmy Wellington, and that fat boy over there is Donald Wilson. Donald Wilson? Say, I like that name, and he looks like he might be just right for my program. Certainly, Mr. Benny. I'll call him over. Oh, Donald? Donald, this is Jack Benny. How do you do? How with an H and an O and a U and an O and a D is a how do do. <laughs> what? Eve, I give me a piece of pie. Eve, I Bill, cut that out. Eve, Vermont. I knew Vermont ahead of time, because this is 12 years ago. Now, Mr. Wilson, I'm considering you as an announcer for my program. And if you take the job, I hope everything turns out fine. I'm sure with an S and a U and an I with an S-U-U-S-U-U-I-L. Huh? He said, I'm sure it will. Oh, oh. <laughs> now, Donald, class is over, and you can speak naturally. 
<laughs> thank you. And, uh, and Mr. Benny, I also want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity because I understand there's a lot of money to be made in radio. Not unless you own a swimming pool. <laughs> what? P with an O and an O-O-L with an O-O-P and an O-P-A. <laughs> Stop it. Now, Mr. Wilson, before we sign the contract, I want to hear you read this simple line. The International Corset Company presents Jack Benny. Yes, sir. The International Corset Company presents the greatest comedian in the world. Huh? That inimitable, that incomparable, that handsome master of ceremonies. Mary, this guy's going to be great. The greatest personality in show business today, that scintillating star, that virtuoso of the violin. You don't have to go any further, Bob. You got the job. Please, Bill, please. I want to hear him. That sparkling wit of the airways, that lovable, laughable favorite of millions, Jack Benny. <laughs> And that, Mr. Kearns, is how I found Don Wilson. And he did his first announcing job while I was still working for the International Corset Company. Well, that's a very interesting story, Mr. Benny. And I've been making notes so I could... Oh, darn it, I dropped my pencil. Oh, yes, yes, I'll pick it up for you. <laughs> hmm. Why, Mr. Benny, do you wear a... Never mind. The interview is over. Goodbye. There goes that song again. We used to call it our serenade. We fell in love when we heard it play. Over and over and over and over again I still remember when I sang the words and they made you mine I'd steal a kiss and repeat each line Over and over and over and over and then We drifted apart
concludes another program, folks, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Oh, Jack. Uh, yes, Don? It was very nice of you to tell that story about how I first came on your program. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. But uh, I've been with you so many years now. Don't you think I ought to get a little more money? What? Money. N with an O, with an N with an O, with an N-O, 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 no. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Good night, sir. This is the Armed Forces Radio Circus.